Welcome to this online session of Building Materials and Construction 5. Today we will be seeing about Unit 4 named Advanced Construction Techniques and Materials. So in this session we will be seeing about Insulated Concrete Forms or ICF and in that we will be seeing about its description, types and also its manufacture. So first we will start with the description of an ICF. Insulating concrete forms most commonly consist of concrete between polystyrene foam although other foam materials such as polyurethane, recycled wood and cement mixtures exist. The foam is usually either expanded polyesterine or it is extruded polyesterine. If the ties are needed to hold the forms together, they are either plastic or metal. The form in general fit together with interlocking tongue and groove joints and stack together accordingly. The form themselves come in many shapes and sizes among the different manufacturers. So ICF forms have two obvious variables. These are the form size when looking at the exterior of the form and the cavity shape that the concrete fills. The exterior shapes of the forms are panel, plank or block. Panel shape forms are available in sizes from approximately 1 inch to 3 inch by 8 inch to 9 inch up to 4 inch by 12 inch and resemble traditional plywood forms. Plank shape forms range in height from 8 inch to 12 inches and are either 4 inch or 8 inch long. Plank systems differ from block systems in that they may be shipped flat either because the ties can bend or the ties are inserted as the wall is constructed. Blocks resemble a typical concrete masonry unit, although the dimensions may vary from the typical ones. Blocks arrive on site ready to stack with their ties in place. Next we will look into its types. So the first one is flat wall. This system has a solid concrete wall of uniform thickness. This system has a nominal concrete thickness of 4, 6, 8 or 10 inches. The actual thickness of the concrete wall is typical nominal thickness reduced by half inch. Bracing for the forms and steel reinforcing for the concrete is as required by the design or the manufacturer's technical data. So the next one is Waffle Grid ICF wall system. This system has a solid concrete wall of varying thickness. It has a nominal concrete thickness of 6 to 8 inches for horizontal and vertical concrete cores. Maximum spacing of vertical cores is 12. So maximum spacing of horizontal cores is 16 inches webs in between the cores have a maximum thickness of 2 inches. Bracing for the forms and steel reinforcing for the concrete is as required by the design or the manufacturer's technical data. So next is the screen grid ICF wall system. This system is often termed post and beam. It has a perforated concrete wall of varying thickness. This system has a nominal concrete thickness of 6 or 8 inches for the horizontal and vertical concrete members. Maximum spacing of vertical cores and horizontal cores is 12 inches. Unlike waffle grid ICFs, the screen grid systems do not have webs. Bracing for the forms and steel reinforcing for the concrete is as required by the design or the manufacturer's technical data. Next we will see the types and classifications of ICFs. So the standard forms. These bulk form of the forms have like 50 mm EPS panels on both sides with 8 hard plastic ties holding the panels. So dimension of these forms are 1000 by 250 by 250 mm. Next is the lintel forms. In combination with half height forms, these form the top layer of all wall gaps and hold the concrete thus preventing thermal leaks. So the dimensions of these forms are 1000 by 125 by 125 mm. So next is the half height forms. Together with the lintel, these form the top layer of all the gaps in the wall and hold the required steel reinforcement. Dimension of these forms are 1000 by 150 by 250 mm. So the next one is the floor edge forms. These form the topmost layer where the wall ends and the floor begins. This envelops the floor slab and thus prevents thermal bridging. So the dimension of these forms are 1000 by 
थ्री सेवेंटी फाइव बाय वन ट्वेंटी फाइव बाय टू फिफ्टी एमएम नेक्स्ट इज़ दी कॉर्नर फॉर्म्स दिस कॉन्स्टिट्यूट नाइंटी डिग्रीज कॉर्नर ऑफ़ द बिल्डिंग द टू साइड्स आर फिफ्टी एमएम ईपीएस पैनल्स हेल्ड टुगेदर विथ हेड आर्ट टाइज डायमेंशन ऑफ़ दिस फॉर्म्स आर सेवेन फिफ्टी और फाइव हंड्रेड so next is the end forms these create wall ending by fitting inside of the standard or corner form and provide a smooth and thermal bridge ending to the wall dimension of these forms are 150 by 125 by 50 mm so next we will see about its manufacturing process so the icf shall be produced under quality control conditions which ensure consistency of its physical and chemical properties including dentistry sorry density thermal conductivity and fire characteristics so the dimensional consistency and close tolerances are important icfs lower and upper surfaces shall be castellated and reweighted where the vertical mating surfaces are tongued or grooved when joined together the fit should be very tight and stable this produces a shutter which is strong and straight both horizontally and vertically and able to contain the wet concrete without leakage at horizontal and vertical junctions the opposite faces of the forms shall be joined by slim high density plastic ties these ties fulfill two purposes initially they restrain the shutter faces from distortion during the concrete infilling process and they assist in permanently securing the insulation to the body of the concrete their positioning and shape assist in the accurate location of any steel reinforcement required their thickness is approximately 2.5 mm elimination risk of any fire penetration the inner surfaces of the shutter have tapering grooves running vertically these are able to receive wedge tongues of inserts used to form vertical stop ends around the doors and windows the stop ends are effective in reducing the possibility of cold bridges at these openings the outer surfaces of the shutter are grooved vertically at 50 mm centers the grooves also provide a key for render or the adhesive used to fix the external brick slips or internal dry lining finishes So next we will see about its manufacturing process. ICF shall be produced under quality control conditions which ensure consistency of its physical and chemical properties including density, thermal conductivity and fire characteristics. Dimensional consistency and close tolerances are important. ICFs lower and upper surfaces shall be castellated and rebated and the vertical mating surfaces are tongued or grooved. When joined together the fit should be very tight and stable this produces a shutter which is strong and straight both horizontally and vertically and able to contain the wet concrete without leakage at horizontal and vertical junctions the opposite faces of the forms shall be joined by slim high density plastic ties the ties fulfill two purposes initially they restrain the shutter faces from distortion during the concrete infilling process and they assist in permanently securing the insulation to the body of the concrete their positioning and shape assist in the secure location of any steel reinforcement required their thickness is approximately 2.5 mm elimination risk of any fire penetration the inner surfaces of the shutter have have tapering grooves running vertically these are able to receive the wedge tongues of inserts used to form vertical stop ends around opening for doors and windows the stop ends are effective in reducing the possibility of cold bridges at these openings the outer surfaces of the shutters are grooved vertically at 50 mm centers the grooves also provide a key for render or the adhesive used to fix the external brick slips or internal dry lining finishes So next we will see about doors and window placed there. So windows and door frames shall be installed by placing a wood frame that has the same inside dimensions as the required opening size. Pressure treated 2 by 12 dimensional lumber shall be used to construct top sides of the frame and 2 by 4 feet from the bottom leaving a space between them for concrete to be placed under window and door openings. 
This space should be filled with the third piece 2 by 4 once the concrete has filled the cavity under the frame. The firm shall be left in place after the concrete is cured providing a fastening surface for installation of doors and windows. Temporary 1 by 4 wood flanches shall be attached on all edges to the wood frame to position and hold the form in alignment with the wall. Additionally, temporary vertical, horizontal, diagonal or cross bracing should be installed to reinforce the frame to prevent weight of the concrete from pushing it down and up against the frame causing to move or change shape. Metal fasteners should be fixed into the frame prior to placement of concrete so that they prelude into the wall cavity securely anchoring the wood frame in place once the concrete is cured. So next is the interior and exterior finishes. So all commonly used standard finishes may be applied on the forms. Finished materials shall be applied with coarse threaded screws to the stuck flanges and the corner bracket or bonded directly to the foam surface. However, when attaching wood siding, wood furring strips shall be added to provide an air space that aids in stabilizing the wood. Furring may also be provided with other sides or wall covering applications. So next we will see the uses and limitations of ICFs. So the first one is its uses. Using insulated concrete forms may be used as a load bearing and non load bearing internal or external walls to build residential and other buildings. So the next one is limitations. Doors and windows position can't be changed after the pouring of concrete. Forms are not reusable as compared to the conventional materials. So that's all about the ICFs. So in this session we saw about the insulated concrete forms otherwise known as ICF and under ICFs we saw its description, its types, its classification, also its manufacturing process with uses and limitations. Thank you.